By the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. Oh, I'm Angie. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how in Cuba I work. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once, they look at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel... Kind of important? Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of Incubi randomly appear in your home was perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? No! I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of... misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So, uh, you're all better now? Right? Yep, all thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. The thing could be intrigued me, but at the same time I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lap rocks for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then. I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy all while I stood there. On the plus side, I was engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scrubbing on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just standing back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I prefer being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one I like better than me, so... I ought to spend more time with myself, but there was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel so sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at that moment. And even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one I turned to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided on it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I had never met him before that. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. So after school I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there and I was armed with only a scrap of paper with the address scribble on it. As a 7 year old, 
obviously I had great ideas. I soon became lost, and like I always do when I feel lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, cock pressed up against the wall and eyes looking at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought I was silly for even thinking that I could change things with my own hand. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? I look up and saw an unfamiliar face. It was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began to move in its rusty joints and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I had became part of a crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them, though would I? I, I wanted, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was the matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as labrats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys live in my house? Much of my friends came over, they would practically think I was part of a harem or something. Oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do? I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Oh, this was hard. Maybe I should have written out a pros and cons list before actually having to make the decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too much about it. it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. It was strange that I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little. But it kind of makes sense. They were in the same exact situation that I was in before. But I didn't want to help them out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, you could... What was that, lovely lady? That is, uh... Spit it out already. You could stay with me here if you would like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. The silence there cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all need a place to stay and, well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, say for enemies, but you get the trip. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really, I mean... I just started living here myself, so I'd appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea except for Sam and... Hey, I don't really hate the idea either, even if they were in Kirby. It would be interesting having... Five guys helped me with, the, with taking care of a house, given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever! Only until we can beat up that group of punks! I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful, if you need a bedfellow... Ah... Uh, Eric, knock it off! I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving. 
Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stab themselves with the food on the table. I noticed Jim's eye twitching in irritation, so I stiffed on my incoming love. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. <laughs> I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way. Best stuff. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. You both are so funny. Both of their faces turned as light pink before they looked away from me. They swallowed the food in their mouths. Sh shut up! We're not funny. We're hungry. Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. They were funny to me. At least, they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. 